I compounded every science-based tools and techniques that Andrew Huberman talks about in his podcast and made a simple routine. I follow the routine for 14 days and give you some insights on my experience. At the end of this video, I'll also guide you on a free Notion template on which you can edit and structure your routine backed by neuroscience to optimize your day. Andrew Huberman is a neuroscientist and an associate professor from Stanford University. He creates some awesome podcasts about productivity, dopamine, maximizing our true potential, athleticism, and very useful self-help content. I binge-watched a lot of his videos on YouTube and made notes for later use. After reviewing all the things he mentioned and doing a little bit of research on my own end, I decided I would follow everything that Andrew Huberman suggests. The neurologically right routine to follow to get all the cognitive benefits without using any supplements. In simple words, brain hacking without nootropics. Now, before we move forward, I would like to address that each and every action of this routine is based on Andrew Huberman's podcast and has a scientific reason for it. Science-based tools for everyday life. And for the sake of simplicity, I've compounded the routine into three major categories. Those are morning, phase one, and phase two. So let's start with the morning. So I just woke up right now. The time is 5.40 a.m. It's really dark outside, so let's turn on the lights. And now I'm gonna go and write down my wake up time, 5.30 a.m. The reason for writing down the wake up time every day is to figure out the temperature minimum of our body. Most of the time it's just two hours before our average wake up time. This will help us to pick a specific time to do hard mental work in the day. More on that in a while. It's weird to drink salt water early in the morning. It's not tasty and you know, eh, whatever. Yeah, it is weird to drink salt water early in the morning, but neurons transfer signals containing ions from one end to other through ionic conduction. Sodium is the main salt which helps the flow of ions. So adding some salt into a glass of water helps our neurons to wake up and function properly early in the morning. Usually, I like to drink some black coffee the moment I wake up, but Andrew says having caffeine early in the morning can lead to an energy dip during afternoon, also called the afternoon crash, and we may feel fatigued and tired. Therefore, craving more caffeine. More coffee! Caffeine is best after 90 to 120 minutes of waking up. So, yeah, I'm gonna refrain from that and meanwhile do some meditation and listen to an audiobook. The more a person asks questions, practices figuring out answers, and trains their ability to think, the better they will actually be able to think. All right, so it's past 90 minutes and I can't resist caffeine anymore. So I'm gonna drink some coffee and get ready for some self-generated forward ambulation. I'll tell you what that means. Self-generated forward ambulation is just a fancy term to say I'm gonna go for a walk or maybe run. When we move our body, it generates eye movement and causes optical flow, which is good for the nervous system and it activates many parts of our brain, meanwhile lowering the functions of amygdala. To build better endurance, he suggests to take in two inhales with short bursts and then following that with a long exhale. So when you're at a steady cadence and you're feeling good, do double inhales while you're running. Double inhale, exhale, double inhale, exhale is a terrific way to breathe while you're in ongoing effort. Apart from activating various parts of our brain and building endurance, it's also important to see sunlight early in the morning to signal the neurons that it's daytime and it's time for us to be more alert. Then the neurons set a huge domino effect on all of our body organs. Alright, so we are done with our running. And after this, I'm gonna go to the gym. This may be a lot of physical activity for me, but you know, I follow David Goggins. I like to stay on. Your dehydration? Fuck it. Lick your motherfucking lips. 
your fucking legs are all sore. You feel like you got shin splints and stress fractures. No, you don't. You got sore fucking legs. Get out of your head and stay hard. Speaking of David Goggins, I'm currently following this US Navy SEAL workout, which I'm gonna make a video later. This video is all about Andrew Huberman. So let's get this workout done and I'll meet you when I'm back from the gym. <laughs> Alright, so I'm back from the gym and now I'm gonna take a cold shower really quick and then start my work from around 10 a.m. So let's go. Cold water treatment could increase our dopamine level in a healthy and natural way. While I take a shower, let me tell you about the linear phase. This phase of the day is for repetitive and analytical tasks. This phase will pay more attention to the mind by following good practices based on ultradian rhythm of the day. Basically, ultradian rhythm is to work for 90 minutes and rest for 20 minutes. Work for 90 minutes, rest for 20 minutes. It'll help us to do many sessions of ultra deep work without feeling exhausted. These days, everyone is doing intermittent fasting for weight loss and burning more fat. But Andrew puts emphasis on how fasting could increase our epinephrine and dopamine levels and focus more on our work. Apart from burning tremendous amounts of fats, Fasting could increase our focus and attention by increasing adrenaline. Epinephrine is made by the dopamine molecule. The more the dopamine molecule works, the more motivated and driven we are towards doing a certain task. The rays of dopamine and epinephrine all together increases focus, attention, motivation and gives us the driving energy to work for our goals. So this is the part where the temperature minimum comes into play. The best time to do deep work is after 4 to 6 hours of my temperature minimum. So if I wake up at 5.30 am, my temperature minimum would be 3.30 am. And the best time for me to do some deep work would be after 9.30 am. So right now it's 10 am and let's start our deep work session. Our body's internal temperature rises from the time we wake up. So what we're trying to do is catch that steep temperature rise and optimize our 90 minutes of deep work in a way. This will allow us to do the most mentally challenging and intense work early in the day. Oh, and also Andrew suggests to get into ultra deep work by turning on airplane mode, avoiding all kinds of distractions and listen to some low level white noise while work to increase our focus and concentration. White noise has been shown to really enhance brain states for learning, actually can have a detrimental effect on auditory learning and maybe even the development of the auditory system in very young children, in particular in infants. He also talks about a bunch of other beats and noises, but it really comes down to personal preference. And for me, I like to switch between binaural beats and white noise depending on the mood and type of work I'm getting into. Alright, so we are done with our 90 minutes of deep work. And I'm a bit hungry right now, but I'm not gonna eat till 2 p.m. because I'm fasting. And to... Oh, that must be my order. Hold on a sec. Oh, oh, look what I got here. Yerba mate. Yerba, yerba, yerba. Fuck that. To boost fasting's effects even more, Andrew suggests to drink yerba mate. It's a special kind of tea grown in Argentina and has more caffeine than regular tea. It could increase focus and boost fat burning. Alright, so I made some yerba mate. And don't ask me how I made it, cause... <laughs> So the reason behind that nervous laughter is because yerba mate is not made like this. Traditionally, it's made in a pot and it's consumed through a metallic straw while pouring sips of water over it. But you know, it's my first day. I'm learning. So the next thing in phase one is to learn something. So I'll listen to an audiobook for about 30 to 40 minutes. And while I listen to the audiobook, I'll look outside the window and pretend that I'm a main character in a movie where the main character is learning something that will drastically change his life. <sighs> yeah, that's about right. 
But all jokes aside, when we try to multitask, we are not getting any real benefit from any of the activities. So it's important to not do any mental task while listening to an audiobook so that our focus isn't diverted and we could concentrate more on listening. And believe it or not, but looking outside the window while listening to audiobook has helped me to become more present and retain more information from the audiobook. All right, so it's time for lunch and I'm so hungry right now. I'm so relieved to see food. I'm having a protein shake, some chicken breasts, salad and some brown rice, keeping it on the lower side because they contain starch in them and starchy foods make us feel sleepy. However, carbs are still needed for recovery from workout and physical exertion. So adding some amounts is useful as long as it doesn't make us feel lethargic. So, regardless of having less carbs in my lunch, I still feel kind of sleepy. So yeah, I'm gonna take a quick nap right now and then talk to you after 30 to 40 minutes. Good night. But Andrew got a better solution than just naps. And that is to do NSDR. NSDR stands for Non-Sleep Deep Rest. It is a technique of giving our body proper rest without actually sleeping. It works by listening to a guided meditation and focusing on their voice and following each and every step. That was great. It was like my body is hypnotized and I don't want to move my arms or legs until the video ends. I feel so refreshed right now. NSDR, I'm gonna do NSDR from now on. I suggest you try an SDR yourself whenever you want to take a nap. From here starts phase 2, aka the non-linear phase. The phase when we are the most creative throughout the day. Non-linear phase starts after 7 to 9 hours of waking up. It's the best time to get into creative work and brainstorm ideas. Alright, so it's 3 pm right now. And like earlier, I'm gonna turn on airplane mode on my phone and add two deep work sessions for this time. One will be from 3 p.m. to 4.30 p.m. and I'll take 30 minutes of rest and then I'll start the second one which will be from 5 p.m. to 6.30 p.m. After 6.30 p.m. we'll head out to see some light and I'll tell you how that will help us to have better sleep and follow the circadian rhythm of the day. So, let's turn on some white noise in the background and get to work. This video has been interrupted by me. If you're enjoying the content so far, then I would really, really appreciate you if you hit the like button as your like is very valuable to me. And this channel is all about learning new things and sharing the experience with visual storytelling. So if you're interested in that, subscribe to my channel for more awesome content like this. All right, back to phase two. As I've been sitting around for the whole day, going out will help me to feed my brain with some variety, refill my energy and lift the mood. Also if I could manage to meet up with my friends, it'll increase my energy as social connections increase baseline dopamine by a large factor. Another reason for going out and seeing some evening light is because it's aligned with the circadian cycle of the day. It's a cycle that repeats every 24 hours and is dependent on the surrounding of an organism. Light and dark are the two major factors that affect the circadian cycle. We sleep, wake up, eat, feel tired and do everything based on the circadian rhythm of the day. So, if we figure out circadian rhythm and make it work for us, then we hack our sleep cycle. Therefore, it was important as fuck to wake up and do forward ambulation so that our brain reacts to light and activates all parts of our brain and body. And at the evening, I'm seeing the sun setting, following with darkness. It'll be easier for me to transition to night mode and fall asleep better. And with that being said, we're moving on to our final act. So it's the final phase now and that is to follow good practices for better sleep. I don't pay much attention to my sleep. I often sleep for 6 hours and you can clearly see that by my dark circles. 
So let's follow good practices for sleeping and have a good night's sleep. Number one, elevating your feet with a pillow. Number two, keeping the room dark and chill. So let's turn on the air conditioner. Number three is wearing an eye mask if you cannot keep the room dark. So it will not be needed here. Number four, taking a hot shower before bed. I'll not be doing this cause today I'm already feeling sleepy. I'll try this on other days. And number five is to inhale and exhale deeply while on bed. That sounded wrong but carrying forward. Finally, he talks about how important it is to breathe from your nose while you're sleeping. He recommends to apply some medicinal tape and it can also prevent snoring. Not that I snore, I just want to breathe from my nose, that's it. <laughs> So I've completed 14 days of following Andrew Huberman's routine and honestly I just feel great like no kidding these past few days have been so much fun and I feel a lot energetic than my usual self. The Yerba Mare is doing stuff to me and I didn't even prepare it the traditional way. I'm thinking of buying a mate and prepare it in the right way like the Argentinians do and get high with. No but seriously I'm enjoying my Yerba Mare, I'm enjoying my fasting. I don't feel much hungry nowadays which is super good if you want to lose weight and maintain a healthy lifestyle and avoid all junk food and stuff and sometimes I even forget to eat lunch like it's 3 p.m. and then I remember oh shit I have to eat lunch now let's talk about the work aspect like listening to white music and binaural beats while working it has helped me a lot to focus on one thing and do the hard mental work early in the day I'm not like one of those guys who could study for six to eight hours straight I'm like let's study then chill then let's chill more. <laughs> so for me blocking my time into 90 minutes of work and 20 minutes of rest and following that throughout the day has helped me a lot. So these past few days have been amazing. I feel really energetic but at the same instant 14 days is really less amount of time to conclude anything but you know i still like it i really like how andy huberman takes complex subjects and make it really easy to understand for us common people who are not so wise in the ways of science so as promised i've attached the link to the routine and it's completely free you just have to make a account on notion if you don't have one for each major section of the routine i've attached links to andrew huberman's podcast and research that back the performed action and finally i want to say if you're someone who listens to andrew huberman's podcast and interested in self-development maximizing productivity and stuff then I think you should consider subscribing to my channel. Also watch this video to see my Spartan journey which is ongoing right now and I'm gonna share some insights after it's done. Another reason to subscribe.